I'm super excited about our next guest. He hasn't been uh, with us, for, I feel like I haven't seen him in a minute. But he's back, and he's the coolest guy, nicest guy, and uh, such a talented actor. I look up to him, um, it, well, I literally look up to him because he's much taller than me. But guys, <laughs> he's just a great guy and a great actor. Please welcome Lucifer himself, Mark Pellegrino! I pulled a muscle. <laughs> Joking. No, I'm not. <laughs> how are you, man? Good, how are you? I'm good. It's I feel like I've been away for so long. I know, it's been too long. Yeah, I know. Glad Dad? <laughs> How's the show going, Dad? Uh, but it's not great right now. No? No, I'm wreaking havoc. Are you? Yeah, oh yeah. No! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well... So you mean what I thought all along you're is actually true! <laughs> yeah. Look, turns out Lucifer was right. Okay. Well, you are a chip off the old block. I'm redeemed. <laughs> yes, I am, aren't I? <laughs> uh, it's a little bit scary when he talks to me like that, but... <laughs> guys, enjoy! Mark Pellegrino! Thank you, sir. What's up, guys? How's Corona treating you? <laughs> it's so weird not being able to touch you guys. I mean, one of the things that I love about the Creation Con is the, uh, the intimacy of it all. <laughs> right? We get to touch, shake hands, put our arms around each other, talk shit. How poor Frankie? Oh, little Frankie. How many people know what happened to Frankie? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. Frankie, my little buddy, my dog, um, jumped off the couch and broke his toe. Aww. Not a weight-bearing toe, so I have no idea how he broke it. But he was excited to see me because I was coming home and my wife couldn't grab him fast enough to stop him and he broke his toe, so he's in a little cast. Aww. Yeah, my little buddy. And he's very depressed about it, you can tell. Because he, he has to sort of walk like this. <clears throat> but uh, we're going to try to get it off next week because he and I have to travel together. So, uh, first time for him on a plane. Not sure how he's going to take it. How many people here travel with their dogs on planes? Is it okay? Yeah. Does it hurt them at all? They don't get the ear popping or anything like that? They're not uncomfortable? Sedative. Sedative? Just give them a Valium. Yeah. That's a good idea. That's for me. Are you saying that I'm a white knuckle flyer? No, I'm saying the dog will... Oh, yeah, yeah. He's usually a pretty easygoing guy, but I imagine LAX is going to be sort of a frightening experience for him since he does... He doesn't have that in his repertoire. So what's up? The sky. Is this a Q&A? Do you actually have questions for me? I feel like I wear my life on my sleeve. Everybody knows everything about me, true and false. So what is there to ask? I'm so curious. Is this a line over here? This is the line over there? Why are you guys so far away? It's funny, we say there's a no-touch policy, but aren't you supposed to say, stay six feet away from the person who has the yes. coronavirus? How many people here have the coronavirus? Raise your hand, please. <laughs> so does it matter? Okay, I'm not going to encourage you to break any rules, because that would be very evil of me. <laughs> and I don't want to be evil. I want to be good. So, should we take questions? Yes. Yes? Yes. Not from you. Okay. <laughs> Over here? Why is this line so short? No, I don't want to go to the short line. <laughs> did you say, uh? You did? Hi, what's up? Okay, I'm still going over here, though. The lights are so bright up here. 
But at least I can see all of your faces, each and every one of you. I can see what you're thinking. Read your minds. And I'm digesting your souls. And I hope you feel it. What's up? Hi. Who are you and why are you here? Um, I live here. You live in Las Vegas? Yeah. Do you really? What? Do you really live in Las Vegas? Yeah. Do you like it? It's, it's alright. How many people live in Las Vegas? <laughs> Is it really the den of iniquity? Yeah. <laughs> what makes it the den of iniquity? Besides me. Marijuana? <laughs> Isn't marijuana everywhere now? Yeah. So that's not good. What else? Gambling? Gambling? What a boring den of iniquity. <laughs> hey. Hi. So what's your name again? Soraya. Hey Soraya, I'm Mark. Hi Mark. Good to meet you. Um, so my question was, when you play Lucifer, what's your favorite um, way of playing him? Like, when you make the smart remarks, or um, being trying to be funny, or do you like playing the more serious when you're angry? Hmm. Somebody better turn off their cell phone. I heard that. Um, I like having fun, and uh, I think I've discovered a way to have fun even when I'm mad. See, that's the beautiful thing about acting is no matter how mad you get or how sad you get, you're creating, right? It's all play, right? They call it a screenplay, a teleplay, a play. And so no matter what you're doing, you're playing. So as long as I can always feel that sense, like I'm free and doing what I want, um, I'm happy, whether it's, um, whether it's a funny scene or a snarky scene or a, or a tough one, like a angry and sad. Uh, it's all good if you just let yourself go and take the ride, so to speak. But I do like, I like, I like um, torturing people with sarcasm. <laughs> hey, there was somebody who's a, a like soul. Who, who applauded over here? <laughs> Four o'clock in the afternoon, and guess what I did? Clap. So go ahead, I hear, I hear gamble, drink, prostitute. Clap. You know I'm married, right, to the toughest woman on the planet. Sl I slept, no. Uh, I, haven't, I didn't gamble, I didn't go to a prostitute, and I did not drink. I'm two years sober, folks. I don't think I was an alcoholic, but I liked alcohol a lot. So I think that I came close enough to say enough. Um, so I didn't drink, didn't, I'm not smoking anything, I'm not chewing cannabis products. Huh? I did not zip line. Huh? It? Knit. It. Yes, I played Pennywise. What? I FaceTimed my dogs. I did FaceTime my dogs. So predictable. No, I just stayed in my room the entire time. You know, they have these iPads next to your uh, next to your bed now. You order things on iPads. You don't have to really interact with anybody. It's fantastic, except the person who comes to your door. How are you? Can I bring your stuff in? No? Okay, I'll just leave it here. Thank you. Bye. It's great. I didn't leave my room until I had to get picked up. So I've been, I was in my room for like 12 hours. And then I tried to watch Dr. Sleep. Anybody see that? Because I'm a horror movie buff. Anybody who knows me knows I'm a horror movie. You liked it? I don't know. I turned it off after the first 15 minutes. But then I turned it back on this morning. And it started getting pretty good, actually, but it was, I still don't know what, what's going on. Except maybe the devil is doing something. She, the girl seems like the devil. I don't want to give anything away. What's up? I'm sorry. Oh, can't remember that. Hello, Mark. What's your name? My name is Lois. I'm from Los Angeles. Hey, Lois from Los Angeles. What are you doing here? I'm um, having a lot of fun. Awesome. <laughs> but I wanted to know if in your personal life, uh, do people ever react to you as your character? Because I think if I ran out, ran into you in a parking lot at night somewhere, I think I'd run away. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> really? If you saw me in a parking lot, you'd run away for at night. I, I think uh, I might, and then I'd come to my senses, but uh, by then you'd be gone. <laughs> I'm the guy who gets the guy who you should be running away from at night. I'm the guy who puts my sick 220 in his face and tells him to fuck off. Or knocks him out. Um, yeah, no, you don't have anything. Yes, people do react to me um, like I'm Lucifer. Um, all the time. Isn't that crazy? Actually, but, but it's a mixed thing. It's like that. I'm, I'm afraid of you because you snap people and they turn to dust. Um, but you're also kind of funny and so I, I sort of like you. I think the, the character that I get the most strange pushback from, not strange, negative pushback from, was Paul from Dexter. They're applauding a wife-beating uh, drug addict. Because people come up to me and say, you, I loved you in Dexter. You were such an asshole. <laughs> okay, I think that's a compliment. But, um, yeah, people do uh, get a little bit of scared of the Lucifer thing. But I think I think I also have a bit of a weird presence. I think because um, I'm six three and people don't think I'm tall because I always do my scenes with Jared and he's like a fucking redwood tree. <laughs> so every time people go up, people like, "Oh shit, you're tall," <laughs> and uh, sort of scary and weird. And um, I don't know if that's the just something I give off or whether it's the Lucifer vibe. I think it's because you play your part so well. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, Lucifer's in the empty. Jesus. Nick is dead. Wonder what that means. Uh, hi. Hey. Um, this one's um, from my friend Owen. He wants to ask um, what you've taken away from playing Lucifer for so long. What have I taken away? Um, <laughs> that's stuff I can't say, like, in public. <laughs> no. Um, is it weird that I've taken away that it's really fun to torture people? No. Um, or have no boundaries, <laughs> or limitless ambition. Um, yeah, I mean, I, what, you know what I've taken away from actually playing Lucifer is, um, is the element of fun, putting the element of fun in, in anything that you do. Um, I'm, I'm going to be doing a show pretty soon that I hope I can, I can sort of bring that over to the part that I'm going to be doing. and Because um, <clears throat> that's very liberating. Lucifer is sort of a liberating character, right? And, and uh, I'm going to take that liberation with me wherever I go. Tell your friend Owen I said hello. And why isn't Owen here? What? Why isn't Owen here? Uh, he lives in Scotland. He lives in Scotland! Tell him I said hi. Don't tell him, like, that I did a bad Scottish accent, though. Just tell him I said hi. Wow, you said you thought it was bad. Yeah. It's because you've been listening to Ruthie. Her accent's not real. She's from Van Nuys, California. I'm just telling you. It's between us, right? This isn't go streaming out on the internet or anything. Nobody can see this. <laughs> What's up? Hi. Who are you? My name's Mary. Mary? I'm, I'm from Kentucky. Like the mother of God, Mary. <laughs> yes. I'm, my name is actually Mary Virginia, so yes. Wow. <laughs> um, so you're I'm, from where? I'm from Kentucky. Cool. Um, so I was actually a religion major in college, and I wrote my senior thesis on Lost and the religious themes in Lost. Holy cow! <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a good grade? I I passed. I mean, I graduated. They just pass. They pass. So, yeah. They pass. Um, Did you have to defend it? I had to do a presentation on it. Yes. Oh wow! Yeah. How long was it? If you don't mind me asking. It was like 35, 40 pages. Ooh, Jesus. Okay, good. And. <laughs> and uh, Jacob figured heavily into that. And, yes. Um, I know you can't trust everything you read online, but I have read that you are more so uh, philosophical than religious, so I was wondering um, what it has been like for you to play several characters that have kind of 
religious um, themes and connections. Why are you laughing at me? Um, first of all, I'm glad you say you can't believe everything you read online. That is absolutely true. Um, I, I have found it very interesting because, I mean, there's a very thin line that separates religion and philosophy. I think religion is philosophy, but it's a, a earlier form of philosophy. I mean, it has all the schools of philosophy in it, right? It has an epistemology, has a metaphysics, has, all, has all, all, all the things that philosophy has in it, religion has in it. Um, and it's interesting that these sort of religious parts came to me at a time in my life when I more or less rejected the mythologies in, in the religions. But they still tell true things and they still say interesting things. And um, particularly Lucifer, who to me is just the first rebel of all time, the first being to stand up against arbitrary authority. And that's at least the, the uh, part of Lucifer's story that I've chosen to focus on. Uh, and I like that. I like, I like the myth of, of getting moral reasoning from this outcast and, and that we get our humanity from this outcast. Um, and it's, it's an interesting paradox to try to contend with, you know, that everything that makes us good and human came from something we call evil. Um, strange, but interesting. Yeah, I, and when I, played, when I played Jacob, I found myself actually liking some of the things the man in black was saying more than Jacob, you know, because I don't, I don't believe in sacrificing people. Um, and the man in black just wanted to go know the world. He just wanted to see the universe. He just wanted knowledge. He just wanted to see. He was curious. And I thought that was great. It's beautiful. I found myself going, yeah, get out there. Go, get off the island. Go see the world. See what's going on. What do you think? Do you think the man in black was a bad guy? Oh, man. That would be too long of an answer. So. Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know if I answered your question, but... You um, yeah, good. Thank you so much. Thanks. Hello. Hello. If you were stranded on a desert island... <laughs> Didn't you see Lost? <laughs> what is the one book from your library that you would take with you? Oh, shit. <laughs> really? Wow. Um, I know many of you might think it would be Ayn Rand, but it wouldn't be. Um, oh, God. What book would I take? Well, the one book. Just one. You are so fucked up. You are killing me. Um, I can't take a movie? It has to be a book? No DVD player on a desert island? What am I supposed to do? Read? A book? One book? Shit. I don't know. I mean, I could say maybe five. If like, somebody asked me what my favorite horror movie is, like, I, could, I couldn't say one. I'd have to say maybe ten. And if you say, what one book could you take with you? I know what I should say, but I can't say that, honestly. Um, hmm. Let me think. Let me think on that. I have to really think on that because I have to go through my library in my mind. And uh, my library is kind of big. You know what I might take with me? This sounds weird. Because um, it might be old news, you know? I mean, we could hit the apocalypse when I'm on the desert island and I'd never know. I would take Stephen Pinker's Enlightenment Now. Does anybody know that book? There was such dead silence, like, what the fuck? <laughs> a boring book. I mean, take Harry Potter, for fuck's sake. <laughs> you dumb. No, there's a reason I would say, who, who, who's, who, there was one clap. Who was the one person who clapped that they know Stephen Pinker's Enlightenment now? Huh? Way back there. Huh? Way back there. <laughs> Why do you, don't you think that would be an inspiring book to take? What? 
yes, I'm on an island, but I want to be inspired, right? That, that human reason can, can defeat almost anything. It's possible, because all we hear from the 24-7 news is that everything sucks, right? And that the coronavirus is going to kill all of us. It's a pandemic. Don't touch each other. Just cancel everything. No. No human beings can figure out, you know, ways to get around just about everything. And that's what Enlightenment Now showed me. Because I started to succumb to the negativity. And when I started reading Pinker's book, it's a surprisingly refreshing take on the world. Nobody's read that book? What? Now you'll read it? Read it, please. It's, it's very good. It's very inspiring. I'll try to come up with one that's more of a crowd pleaser. You know what I'd love to take? Twilight? Oh, that scene when they broke the bed on their honeymoon. Was, and he was so guilty. Oh God, I'd love to relive that over and over again. <laughs> What's up? Who are you? I'm Ivana. Ivana? Hi. Where are you from? Here. Are you from here? Yes. You like it here? Yeah, yeah more as I get older. Oh, okay, why? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because you have more access to the vices, is that what you're saying? <laughs> what? <laughs> Because you have more access to the vices as you get older, like now as you get older you can gamble, you can drink. The more can... I get older, the more fun and things get, yes. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> but then there's a threshold at which, once you get older, the less fun things become. <laughs> Just watch out for that. We're all headed there, folks. Go ahead. I don't mean to bring this down. Um, so my question is, uh, in the recent season of Supernatural, Hey, season more, 15? Season 15, the last season. More people are starting to realize Lucifer was right in many ways and are more siding with Lucifer. Really? <laughs> Congrats. Thank you. <laughs> and so my question is, if Lucifer was to come back onto the show, what do you think would be the best ending for Lucifer? <laughs> <clears throat> well, I mean, it's clearly world domination. And, and or recreating the universe in the image of his own likeness. Um, but I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. If Lucifer I... is trapped in the empty, and Nick is dead. Well, like Sam and Dean, they might come back, I mean. <laughs> but he's not like Sam and Dean. Right? <laughs> I, I actually do know how it ends. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and I'm and I'm not fucking with you. But I'm not gonna tell you. And in that way I am fucking with you. <laughs> See what this part did to me? It, it killed me. It, it it killed the other mark, the benevolent mark, and it brought out this impish playful little bastard. Snark. Snarky. I can't turn off the snark. What's up? Hi, Mark. Who are you? Elena. Hey, Elena. Hi. Are you from here? No, I'm from San Diego. Copy that. <laughs> so my question to you is, besides Sam, who do you think Lucifer's dream vessel is? RuPaul. I think it's Sam RuPaul. <laughs> I would love to do that show. I am dying to do Drag Race. Wasn't Jeff Goldblum on recently? As a, does anybody watch him? I guess you guys watch the show. Was Jeff Goldblum a, a, a judge recently? No, maybe I'm thinking, I, don't, I, th I thought I heard he was in the, in the new season. Maybe I'm giving something away that I shouldn't. Um, yeah, I'd love to be a judge on that show. Um, you know, Miles, who plays my son on um, 13 Reasons Why, was a judge on the show. I'm totally jealous. What's up? Hi. What, what's your name? Juanita. Hey, Juanita. How are you? I'm, uh... Good. Nice. Yeah. 
So my question is, being the awesome satirical devil that you are, how hard was it to be evil, evil Nick? Oh, that was, yeah. <laughs> Poor Nick. There were sometimes when they wrote lines that were very Lucifer-esque for Nick, and I had to say, that's very Lucifer. Nick doesn't have Lucifer's sense of humor. Um, that was um, a little troubling from time to time, but like I said, when you bring play to something even that troubling, um, it makes it sort of worthwhile. You, you don't have a nervous breakdown over the part, you know. When you're young, when you're young in your 20s and you're an actor, you think you have to stay in it all the time. I did this movie called The Murder of Crows where I played this, um, this guy, I can't, I, I don't, you don't care about seeing that, I can give you a spoiler alert, right? I'm the killer, I'm the bad guy. Go figure! But I play a bunch of different characters in it, but my whole thing is vengeance. And as a human being, I sort of relate to that. I'm a vengeance guy. I, 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 get, I get that justice thing. Is, justice is very important to me. But, you know, we were doing the film in New Orleans, and I was walking around New Orleans and doing all my homework, and this is where my family was, journaling. I was in this dark place. I thought I was going to die. After a month of that, I said, I'm done. I can't do it anymore. It's too exhausting. Well, luckily, when you get older, you realize you don't have to do that. You can do all your homework and feel all your stuff, and it can still be fun. So, um, yeah, even, even doing Nick, even though he, you know, he, he had a pretty cool, at first, before he got seduced by the dark side and the power and wanting to be, you know, the, the power corrupts sort of idea. He really, I think, had a, a sincere desire to right or wrong. And um, that's the stuff I get behind, you know, and that motivates me, even with somebody like Lucifer. That is, Lucifer has a real beef, and you guys all know now, God sucks. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying that to you, really. I'm saying it to God. <laughs> and so Lucifer wasn't so far off, right? So he had, he had a point. He might have gone about trying to promote his cause in all the wrong ways, but... He was right. What's up? Hi. Hey. Um, my question is, how did they like, prepare to get into the role as Lucifer? I didn't. <laughs> because I am Lucifer. <laughs> I wonder what Tom Ellis would say to that. He and I did a photo shoot recently together, and it was actually really fun. Super cool guy. Have you guys, have you guys met him? Yeah. Super cool guy. Um, yeah, that's the truth, though. I'm not, I'm not joking. Thank you. What's that? Oh, hey. hey. Sorry, I was bothering my friend. Um, I was wondering, um, one of my favorite movies is Moving Allen, so I was wondering what it's like to work with a one star and then that year, a co-star and then end up on another project with the same co-star. Yeah, um, that would probably be interesting if I remembered making Allen, Moving Allen. I don't remember really anything about that movie, but I do sometimes see pictures of my naked ass online from that, which is a little embarrassing. <laughs> I don't remember that. Um, yeah, I, I think I did it because I was friends with Marley Shelton um, and her dad and, and then Misha, you know, incidentally, I didn't even remember him from that movie until, you know, we started working together for a while and I was like, oh, hey. But, uh, yeah, but I'm glad you liked it. What's it about? <laughs> Do they kill, they kill me because I'm an asshole and then, they, and then I'm not really dead or something? speakers are going out that way. Oh, it is? Oh, you can't? It's echoing? Yeah. So I can pretty much say anything and you won't understand me? I'm going to uh -huh. have to watch it later. I didn't hear any of it. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's it. Thank I'm you honest. for your question. I could have said anything. Let's play with that. Hey. Hey, Mark. How are you? Good. How are you? Pretty good. 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 Uh, my question is, so since the show is getting ready to wrap pretty soon, are there any props or things from the set that you're wanting to take with you, or have taken with you? Well, I want the Impala. 
I don't think they'll give it to me, though. Isn't it, wait, isn't Jensen getting the Impala? Yes. Whatever. <laughs> huh? That's true, but some of them are like stunt Impalas and they're all messed up. <laughs> wait, there was... <laughs> I did a fight scene with, um, with Jared and threw him into one of the stunt Impalas and he did, you know, most of the throwing. <laughs> you know, he's a massive guy. And he dented the entire side of the car. It's like, what the fuck? Um, is there a prop that I would like? Um, hmm. Let's see. Maybe one of the cages might be fun. You know, the Michael Cage uh, in the alternate universe? That would be fun to put guests in. I don't want to be in it. Because I was already in it once. It's not, you know, it's no picnic. But it'd be fun to put people in just, you know, like strangers. Hey, come on in. Uh, check it out. I want to show you something. Come here. It's really cool. Right there. Check that out. Go in there. Go. That, is, that, that was weird. I don't know. Um, what, what, what would you like? Would you, would you like a particular prom? Uh, definitely baby, but um, other than that, I don't know. Maybe something from the trunk of baby, one of the cool weapons or something. Yeah. Oh yeah. Grenade launcher probably. Jesus. <laughs> what are you going to do with a grenade launcher? <laughs> what, Go on, sorry. tell us what you're going to do with that grenade launcher. <laughs> That's the worst answer you possibly could have given. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, okay, thank you. We're gonna keep an eye on you. Hi. What's up? Uh, I was curious, since you started in relatively early season, um, and Jared and Jensen have been throwing, doing a lot of pranks, is there any chance you got pranked, or did you witness any cool pranks they did on set? never been involved in a prank. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> they never prank me. like season five. Prank me. What? Was that the prank? That was it? What? What did you say? I didn't hear that. I, I still don't think I've been pranked. But maybe I'll have a chance. The season isn't over. Just saying. Yep. Hi there. What's up? Uh, <laughs> um, I'm wondering, other than your performance, who gave your favorite performance of Lucifer? that I, I really liked. I liked, uh, I liked Misha's version, because I think, I, think um, I think he stayed consistent with this sort of through line and characterization. Um, and that was cool, and then he had his, his own sort of take on it. But then surprisingly, uh, um, Rick Springfield, no, I'm just joking. I'm joking. Where's the camera? The camera. I did not like Rick Springfield. Um, the pre the guy, the president, whoever played the president. You know what I liked about him? This is gonna seem really weird, but he just was so virginal. Does this make sense? How many people have seen that episode more than once? Everything was like new. He was like feeling things for the first time, and I thought that was kind of cool. And that would be that would be sort of a truthful. 
tank, even though Lucifer's technically been through a few bodies and knows what it feels like to be a sensual being. Um, he sort of did it as if that wasn't the case. Maybe I'm thinking that, or what, am I not? Am I imagining that? Right? He seemed like having sex for the first time, and like, you know, he was just, it was cool. So I sort of liked that take. I thought it was original. And um, even though he broke character, he did it in an interesting and subtle way. So I thought that was cool. Thank you. Thank you. I was just messing with you. What's up? Hi. Hey. Um, this is my first convention, so if you've already been asked this question, I apologize. Um, I'm not going to forgive you. OK. So do you feel like Lucifer actually truly loved Jack as his son, or only was after Jack for his power? What do you think? Oh, come on, man. Yeah, I, I feel torn. I feel like... You guys like, are so cynical. I, I feel like he was prepared to love him, but then when Jack was like, no, and he was like, well, fuck you then, you know? <laughs> do you guys think... Do you guys... Let me ask you guys a question. It's just between us. <laughs> do you think Lucifer has a conscience? Yes. No. Let me hear... Let me hear a yes... Okay, and a no. No! That's not, we're, see, we're equally divided here. And that's unfortunate. Um, I, I can tell you the choice I made. The choice I made was that I, I think Lucifer, because he had deep daddy issues, wanted to give his son what he didn't get from his father. So I think there was a deep connection and a deep love. I think it was intermingled with his desire for power. Uh, as well. Like, right? We're human beings. We're complicated. Everything we do is multidimensional. Why did that get an applause? Or are you just applauding because those people are being... It's real. Yeah, it's real, right? Uh, so, you know, we're all complicated people. Everything we do has these sort of multi-dimensions multi to them and psychological baggage. And um, it's no different for Lucifer, right? In the end, the show's about family, right? So that's, that, that's what it was for me. So I think he did love... Um, Jack, and I think that's what made the betrayal that much more painful for Lucifer when it happened, when he decided to side with the Winchesters. Um, and that's what made him go off the, the deep end. Um, not that he had far to go. It's, it's always just a step to the deep end for, for Lucifer, but uh, that sort of ruined his plans. And it was, it was both that it was ruining his plans and ruining his plans with his son. So, that's a good question. Thank you. What's up? A uh, two-part question for you. Uh, in Two real parts. life, your honest opinion, do you think you're going to go to heaven or hell? And if hell, are you going to be a torturer or torturee? <laughs> <laughs> what, if, what if I don't believe in heaven or hell? What if I think it just ends? Like, this is the only life you have. And if it's over, it's over. What about that? Is that not an option? I have to choose one of those? Your options? You gotta choose one. <laughs> you do the torturing? Are you gonna do the torturing, or are you gonna be the one tortured? I'm not a catcher. <laughs> I'm a pitcher all the way. I'm gonna get nailed for that. Somebody's gonna find that. You guys are so dirty. I was talking about baseball. Um, yeah, I guess heaven doesn't sound very interesting to me. Am I, am I bad for that? But hell doesn't either. Hell sounds fucked. I don't like either alternative. I just want to live the best life I possibly can right here, right now. Love the people that are around me right here, right now. Try to leave the world in a better place than, it, than I left it right here, right now. And then, um, that's it. The big empty. You guys feel better? <laughs> Pep talk? Yeah, you ready to go out there and take on the world? What's up? Hi. Uh, 
Hi, Mark. My name is Cece. What's up? Um, my question for you is, what was your favorite line that you said as Lucifer? Snapping necks and cashing checks is what I do. <laughs> Snapping necks and cashing checks. What's yours? Do you have a favorite line? He said, shut up to me. Oh, really? It's the way you delivered it. It was perfect. <laughs> oh, Sam. What's up? Hi, Mark. Hey. We, as a group of friends that I've come with all the way from England, have a question to do with you performing Sweet Transvestite at karaoke. Yes? We ended up in a massive debate about you'd be cast as Frankenfurter. Who would you cast as the rest of the group if you were to do a Rocky Horror production? Like just, uh, any actors? Any actors, but we were going Supernatural route. Oh, any actors from Supernatural? Oh, let's see. I think uh, Misha would probably have to be Brad. <laughs> and you know you want to see him in those tidy whities <laughs> uh, Oh! <laughs> I think he wants a part in Rocky Horror. Maybe, so, see, to me, the rock star has to be Riff Raff. Yeah. So you're Riff Raff. Riff Raff. But that's all the casting I can do now because it looks like I have to leave, but we can talk about it later. What? Are you here tomorrow, Mark? Yeah. All right, there yeah. you go. You got Mark tomorrow. I'm here tomorrow. Oh, maybe we could say, maybe we could say Jared would be Rocky. <laughs> no, we were casting him as, um... Huh? Riff Raff. We were putting Jared as Riff Raff. No! <laughs> you gotta put the rock star as Riff Raff. I thought I was Riff Raff. You are Riff Raff. She's, she's recasting you. I'm defending you. I'm defending him for Riff Raff. <laughs> huh? Jensen as Magenta. Jensen as Magenta. No. It's gotta be Luffy. Or Columbia. She's a tap dancer, so she could do Columbia. Okay, she's a dancer. All right, anyway, we're, we're, just, we're getting lost in the weeds. I'm fascinated. Uh, well, he's back again tomorrow, guys. Uh, so you, you haven't seen the last of him. Listen for himself, Mr. Mark Pellegrino!